Hi, this is our second class this uh, week in this second unit, uh, Bootstrap World. Yesterday, or, um, earlier this week, um, you talked about um, turning math expressions, like this one right here, into circles of evaluation, and how to use circles of evaluation um, to, and turn that into racket code. So you worked on that quite a bit last, uh, last time we met. But circles of evaluation can be used for more than just numbers. Let's look at this one here. So this is something where the operation is called star. And it works on 50, solid, and red. So what do you think that's going to do? Think about that. Let's look and see. So the same rules are applied. Um, so, so let's look at that circle again. So in racket code, we write it the same way. Star is the operation, so it goes first. And then the others go from left to right. There's no inner circle. So that's the end of it. So let's see what we get um, running that in racket. So I'll do it first. So it was open the circle. Star is the operation. And it said 50 solid red oh, I misspelled solid Oops. star 50 solid red. And it is a star that must be some kind of maybe size 50 and solid red. So why don't you go ahead, pause the video, and um, you type in that same thing, and then also change the, the, the size and see what how that works. Um, so you see if you can guess at some other color names and see how those work. So pause the video now and you try it. Okay, good. So there's an entirely new type of value being used in these expressions. Solid and red, right? Those are, those are not numbers, clearly. Um, but they're a new type of data, a data type called string. And we learned about strings in Python, and they Python also uses quotes to um, to tell the computer that these are strings. So in in Rocket language, a string is anything between quotation marks. So uh, when we learned about values before, you learned that you can even write a program that's just a number. Well, you could try to write a program that's just a string. So Go ahead and stop the video now and try to just type in some numbers and even just type in some strings and see what happens. Okay. So in, in the example we used, the expression included a new function called star, right? So that was the operation we were doing. So I've been calling it operation because that's the mathematical operation. But now that we can do new things that are more than just mathematical operations, we can call it a function. So a function um, tells the computer what to do, and then the arguments are going to be how to do it. So just as the, the addition function plus takes in two numbers, star takes in a number and two strings and produces a new type of data called an image. So now let's look at these down here and let's see what data type each of these values are. And we can the choices are number, string, and image. So pause the video right now and uh, type in your, um, your video notebook. Just type in whether you think for each one of these you think it's number, string, or image. So pause now and do that. Okay. So hopefully you typed out what you think these are, and I'll tell you now. 
So 42 is a number. Hi mom is a string. This here is a number. This triangle is an image. This is, those are the, the choices. It's not a number or a string, so it must be an image. This one, even though inside the quotes it is a number, because it's got quotes around it, and our rule said that a string is anything with quotes around it, that must be a string. So this is a string, even though it's got a number inside it, the, the data type of this expression is string. And then same thing, the data type of this expression is string. And this picture of a cup of coffee is an image. One thing you can notice in Racket, it helps us by di using different colors for different types. Um, it, in this picture, it's blue for numbers and green for strings. But let's see if that's what it is in Racket 42. Yep, that shows that is well, it looks like all of those are green. Uh, so in the, when I type it in, it's green, but in, um, when, it, when it prints out, it's blue. So that, we can't rely on that. So you've seen how expressions produce values. So that star 16, 4, right, would be a multiplication of two numbers, is going to produce a number. Other expressions can produce strings or images, and we just saw how star produce an, Im produce an image. So what data type will each of the expressions below evaluate to? So pause the video, and in your video notebook, just type in um, what data type you think is going to be for each one of these. Okay, so here's how I'm thinking about these. So we want to look at, see what the function is. The function is division. And we know that division only works on inputting uh, numbers that are input. And it outputs a number also. The function in the next one is star. And we saw before that star produces an image. So it doesn't matter what these other arguments are. Star always produces an image. So this star produces an image. This star produces an image. All right, the last one, the function is minus, and we know that minus works on numbers and also produces a number. So we'd say that the, the, the uh, expression would evaluate to a number data type. Here are some other um, listed items. Some of these are the names of a data type. And some of them are values that are a data type. So let's see what we mean by that. So that's a number, right? This is not in quotes. It's not a number, and it's not an image. And when we look at it, it's one of the data types that we already know about called string. So this is the name of the data type. On the other hand, this hi mom is a string. So it is a, an expression that is a string. 91, because it's in quotes, it's also a string. The expression right here, it's not in quotes. It's not a number or an image. In fact, it's the name of the data type number. The next one is the name of the data type image. And the last one is a number. So I just want you to tell the difference between the name of a data type like string, number, and image, and an expression that actually is data. So that's the end of uh, data types. And now we're going to see how we can use data types in our programming. So we've already seen functions that take in two numbers, such as plus and minus. Um, and then we saw that star is a function that takes in a number, which was the size, and two strings, which told star how to behave. Um, and then that output an image. So the different functions take in different inputs. And we need a way to keep track of the requirements for each function. So what we call is the domain. This word here, D-O-M-A-I-N. The domain of a function is the data that the function expects. 
Okay, so the type, the data type of the data that can go into the function is called the domain. So think about why is it helpful to know the domain of a function. And pause the video and in your video notebook, type out just one or two sentences about why it's helpful to know the domain of a function. If you forget what domain is, you can go back up here in the book. So pause the video now and do that. Okay. So by keeping a list of all of the functions in the language and their domains, then we as programmers can look up how each function is used. But it's also important to keep track of what the output of the function is, so what the function produces. So, uh, for example, a program wouldn't use a star, a programmer wouldn't use a star if they were trying to produce a number because star only produces images. So when I know the types of functions, um, if I, I know what kind of problem I'm trying to solve, and if I am trying to get something that's a number, well then I know that I don't even think about star because star produces images. So the range of a function is the data that the function produces. So domain is what goes in, and range is what comes out, the data types. So a function could have a number that comes in and an image that comes out. And that would be, the, the image that comes out would be the range of the function. So domains and ranges help programmers write better code. Uh, they prevent silly mistakes and they give us hints about what to do next. So if you want to use a star function, you can look up the domain and know that the first number has to, that the first input has to be a number. So you don't even have to remember it every time as long as you understand what that domain looks like. So instead of writing a single value there, you could write a whole expression. As long as it produces a number, like this expression here produces a number, you know that it's legal input for a star. Yep, so that's, that's what this one says, is that any result of a times can um, be used as for a number value. So when we write down the domains and ranges um, of a function, we call it a contract. So that way we can keep track of what the domains and ranges and names of a function are. So a contract has three parts the name, the domain, and the range of a function. So here's an example of the contract for the star. It's called star, so there's its name, and then a colon. And then if we remember, let's go back and look at our star. So here was how we made a star. Let's make a bigger star. Let's make a pretty big one. Let's make it 10 times bigger. Whoops. Jump to the end. That's a big star. So what star has, it's the, the uh, function is called star. The first input is a number that tells us how big it's going to be. The second one is a string, and the third one is a string. So let's go back here and look, and that's what it says. A fun, uh, this function star takes in a number and a string and a string, and it produces an image. So you can think of um, a language like Racket as a collection of Lego pieces. Uh, when the contracts are like the tabs and slots that tell you how each piece connects. So if I have a problem that needs an image, then I might think of star as a good way to solve that problem. But if I have a problem that needs a number, I don't even have to worry about star. So um, right away, when I know the, the contract for a function, it helps me figure out how I'm going to solve my problem. So contracts are, are very important and useful, and you should keep a list of them somewhere. And so your workbook, actually in the last pages of your workbook, um, the last page of the last two pages, um, you'll find a, a sheet labeled contracts. So go ahead and write the contract for star in your workbook 
in the first row of the contracts table. So I'll go back to here so you can see it. So write the contract for STAR at the end of your workbook, and then um, that will be it for today.